Welcome back scholars. This video is about electrolytes. And the definition of an electrolyte is a compound which dissolves in solution, which allows an electrical current to be carried or conducted by that solution. And so what this really means is that electrolytes are going to create ions in solution. And we can classify compounds as either strong, weak, or non-electrolytes. In the strong electrolytes, there's a pretty short list here. And one of the key characteristics of a strong electrolyte is that it ionizes completely. A weak electrolyte only ionizes partially, and a non-electrolyte is not going to ionize at all. In other words, a non-electrolyte is not going to create ions in solution. A non-electrolyte will not allow a solution to conduct electrical current. A strong electrolyte generally allows that solution to conduct a lot of current, whereas a weak electrolyte is only going to allow a little bit of current to be conducted. And to know what kinds of compounds are strong electrolytes, in other words, to know which kinds of compounds will, will ionize completely, we have a short list. And the first item on that list are soluble salts. So anything which is an ionic compound composed of ions which is soluble in water will be a strong electrolyte. As an example, something like, say, sodium chloride. So here I've got sodium chloride. And that sodium chloride, if I have that as a solid, let's say, and I add that into water, then that actually ionizes. It breaks apart and turn, turns into sodium and chloride ions. Now, the reason why this was originally aqueous is because if you see this described, if you see aqueous or a solution of sodium chloride, this is really what happens in solution. So whether you start from a solid or whether you start by saying that is aqueous, either way, if you put something like sodium chloride into water, it completely reacts and turns into sodium ions and chloride ions. The only exception to that would be that if you've reached the solubility limit and you can't dissolve any more sodium chloride, then it wouldn't be aqueous, it would not ionize, it would stay as a solid on like the bottom of the container. The next thing on our list for strong electrolytes will be strong acids. And there are tons and tons and tons of acids but there's a very short list of acids that we consider to be strong in general chemistry, and that's these acids, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic. Notice that HF is not on here, okay? So HCl, HBr, HI, some of the halogen acids, but not HF. Some of the other acids that are strong are those that have the polyatomic ions with lots of oxygen. So perchloric acid and chloric acid are both considered to be strong. But notice that phosphoric acid is not on this list, okay? Nitric acid is another acid that's strong and sulfuric acid, but the first H only is considered to be strong. So what does that mean? Well, that means that for something like HCl, when HCl reacts with water, whether it's HCl gas that you are bubbling through and dissolving in water, or whether you already have a solution of HCl that you're trying to think about, in water, really what happens is that creates hydronium ions. The H from the HCl gets taken by the water to create hydronium ions and the chloride ion gets left behind. In other words, it completely ionizes in solution. There are no HCl molecules left behind, okay? Notice that is a molecular compound, whereas sodium chloride is ionic, 
but both of those turn completely into ions in solution. The only other thing on our list for strong electrolytes are strong bases. So what is a strong base? Well, the strong bases that we're thinking of are hydroxides, specifically metal hydroxides, and they are hydroxides of the group one and heavy group two metal hydroxides. So by heavy, we mean that kind of calcium is on the line there, and anything lower than calcium would be considered to be a strong base. So for instance, sodium hydroxide here, sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound. We would name that as an ionic compound, sodium hydroxide. It also happens to be a base. It's a strong base. Because it's a strong base, because it's a soluble ionic compound, it will dissociate or ionize completely into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So whenever you see aqueous sodium hydroxide, you always want to think of that as existing in solution as separate sodium and hydroxide ions. Whenever you see aqueous or dissolved sodium chloride, you want to think about that as being a soluble ionic compound and a strong electrolyte. And you want to think about that existing as ionized, completely ionized, sodium and chloride ions. Likewise, any strong acid like HCl, you want to think of that as though it reacts completely with water to form hydronium and chloride ions. In common practice, typically what we do is we simplify the hydronium and just call it H plus and just think about the water as being a solvent that, that, con that contains that H plus. So that's strong electrolytes. Again, strong electrolytes ionize completely. You know something as a strong electrolyte if it is a soluble salt, a strong acid, or a strong base. And the list of strong acids and the list of strong bases is pretty short, so you really want to memorize those. The soluble salts, the next video will actually have a little bit more on. Weak electrolytes will are only partially ionized. That means they're only going to partially break apart to form ions. Well, what includes what are what's included under a weak electrolyte? Well, the insoluble salts are included under weak electrolytes. So as an example, we already said sodium chloride was a soluble salt. If we have an insoluble salt, something like sodium, something like silver chloride rather. Silver chloride would be an insoluble salt, so it would actually be a solid. However, in the presence of water, a little bit of that would dissolve as sodium ions and as chloride ions. However, this arrow here really should be a lot, lot shorter so that it's only a little bit going towards the products. And this is actually going to be a reversible reaction where the silver ion and the chloride ion can recombine to reform the, the reactants. So the arrow going towards the reactants would be very large the arrow going towards the products would be very small. So this is an example of an insoluble salt, but because some portion of it can generate some ions, it will only partially ionize. So it is a weak electrolyte. But in solution, rather than thinking about it existing as these ions, we are generally going to think about silver chloride as existing in the solid form in solution. Well, what else besides insoluble salts are weak electrolytes? Well, weak acids will be weak electrolytes. As an example, the most common weak acid is actually acetic acid. Or vinegar. Again, this is a molecular compound. This acid 
consists of molecules in solution. However, just like water can take the hydrogen away from the HCl, water can also take the hydrogen away from the acetic acid. And we could think about that as being a hydronium ion with H2O as the solvent. When the H plus gets taken away from the acetic acid, you have acetate ions left behind. However, this reaction is reversible, and this reaction is reactant favored. In other words, only a very little bit of the acetic acid will form the H plus and the acetate in solution. It's much more likely that the H plus and acetate in solution will react together to reform the acetic acid molecule. So again, in solution, we normally think of the acetic acid as existing as this molecule. Whereas for sodium hydroxide, which was a strong electrolyte, we should be thinking of that existing as sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Besides weak acids, we also have weak bases. Weak bases are everything that's a base that's not a group one or group two metal hydroxides. Nitrogen containing compounds are often weak bases. Ammonia is the simplest nitrogen containing compound other than nitrogen gas. But well, let me say it's the simplest nitrogen containing base. And this ammonia reacts with the water. And just like the water could remove a hydrogen from the acids, this base can remove a hydrogen from the water, turning into ammonium. So NH3 strips an H plus from the water, becoming NH4 plus. And that water that has had an H plus stripped off of it becomes the hydroxide ion. But again, this is a very weak base. It is only going to partially ionize. And again, it's much more likely that the ammonium and hydroxide ions will react with each other to remake the water and the ammonia than it is for the ammonia and the water to react in the forward direction. So the, showing the different sized arrows here is one way we can show that. So remember, again, in solution, strong electrolytes like sodium chloride are going to exist completely as ions in solution where those ions are surrounded by the polar water molecules. Weak acids, like acetic acid, in solution will mostly exist as this molecule, but the water that surrounds it will sometimes react with the acidic hydrogen on the acidic, on the acetic acid, but just as quickly as it reacts, it can pretty much turn back into the acetic acid again. And so it doesn't stay ionized for very long. So that's weak electrolytes. Weak electrolytes, again, are only going to partially ionize. They are only going to make some ions in solution, not as many as you might predict based on the formula. And they, when we think about them in solution, we're going to think about them as existing as the complete salt or as the full or total or whole molecule. The last category would be non-electrolytes. This is going to be all other molecular compounds. So remember, if it's an ionic compound, it's either soluble or insoluble. If it's soluble, it's a strong electrolyte. If it's insoluble, it's actually a weak electrolyte because insoluble technically doesn't actually mean never dissolves. It just means that it does not dissolve to any large amount. So insoluble salts like bone even can partially create some ions in solution, okay? So ionic, ionic compounds, you've only got these two choices. But for molecules, for molecular compounds, you've got to decide, is it an acid or a base? If it's a base and it's molecular, it's got to be a weak base. The only strong bases that we really know of are those that consist of the hydroxides. Um, and the hydroxides would be ionic compounds. Strong acids, though, many of these are molecular, okay? 
Weak acids, weak bases would be weak electrolytes. And all other molecular compounds would be non-electrolytes. So all other molecular compounds, probably the easiest one to think about is something like sugar. And depending on how you look at and view that sugar, whether you do it as a ring or whether you do it as the straight chain, that sugar molecule, when it dissolves in solution, is going to stay together as a molecule, okay? It's not going to dissociate. Even if you're looking at the straight chain form here of the sugar, which is what happens when that ring opens sometimes in solution, the hydrogen here that's next to this double bonded oxygen, some people are tempted to say makes this an acid, but remember for that H to be acidic with that double O, it has to have another O there. It has to have another oxygen. So just seeing this functional group is not enough to make this into an acid. You have to actually see this functional group, the carboxylic acid group. So again, the big thing here is whether you have a soluble salt, a strong acid or a strong base, and then you have a strong electrolyte whether you have an insoluble salt or a weak acid or a weak base, then you have a weak electrolyte and all other molecular compounds are non-electrolytes. Now to check your understanding, uh, this is gonna start to blend a little bit into Friday's video as well. But if you look in your printed out packets or you look on Friday's assignment, which has uh, four questions, the first question says, write the complete ionic equation for the reaction between aqueous solutions of barium hydroxide and nitric acid. Now, for today, to apply this, all I'm going to ask you to do right now is identify what kind of electrolyte each of these compounds are. And so, when you look at these, you see the HNO3, and you might say, oh, hey, HNO3, I memorized that that is a strong acid because that's on my list of strong acids. So what does that make this? Well, this is a strong acid, but the key for its behavior and solution is really that if this is a strong acid, it is also a strong electrolyte. Okay. And the barium hydroxide, you should be saying, well, that's an hydroxide compound. And hydroxides, hydroxides tend to be bases. And so I think about my barium hydroxide. And I happen to remember that barium is a group two metal and it's below calcium. And so for me, barium hydroxide is going to be a heavy group two metal hydroxide. So that makes this a strong base. And again, because that is a strong base, that is going to make it a strong electrolyte. You wanna go ahead and do this and only this, even though there are other parts to those questions. If you only do this with the other reactions, and the other compounds in those reactions, All you have to do with them is identify whether they are weak electrolytes, strong electrolytes, or non-electrolytes. And the nice thing is for all three of these, for all the other reactions on this worksheet, I will go ahead and tell you upfront that none of them are non-electrolytes. You can rule that out. So you're really just trying to decide, are these strong or weak? And if you'll do that today, 
then that'll give you some practice and then you can think about the discussion questions. This would be the first step for being able to do what you're going to do in tomorrow's video. And tomorrow you're going to start to answer the rest of these questions as well, but you're not actually going to complete all of them on Friday. They will be completed on Monday. So uh, please jump into the discussion, ask your questions, give your summaries and your thoughts, and uh, see you on Friday's video.